Hello, everyone. We are ready to get started. My name is Caitlin Edwards, and I'm the Community Events Manager here at Linux Professional Institute. Thank you for joining us to, at, for today's webinar. We will provide um, a really great uh, introduction and information needed around the upcoming LPI board elections. For the first time, Linux Professional Institute is opening community nominations for its board of directors to be voted on by LPI members in the spring of 2021. This webinar will be an introduction to the election process and how you can get involved. We will walk through why LPI is now holding elections for its board of directors, what is the nomination and election process, how candidates can get on the ballot, and how to assist in the process, such as becoming a member of the nominating committee. For those of you new to Linux Professional Institute, we are the global certification standard and career support organization for open source professionals. With more than 200,000 certification holders, we are the world's first and largest vendor neutral Linux and open source certification body. We have certified professionals in over 180 countries, deliver exams in multiple languages, and have hundreds of training partners. During the webinar, we are encouraging questions, so feel free to ask your questions using the Q&A or the chat box at the bottom of your screen, submitting questions publicly or privately. I will keep track and facilitate throughout the webinar. And please note that in the chat box, you're able to switch between chatting with panelists only or choosing to chat with everyone. This webinar will be recorded and the recording and slides will be sent out to everyone afterwards. Today's webinar will be led by Evan Leibovic, LPI's Director of Community Engagement. So at this time, Evan, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks a lot, Caitlin. Uh, you can hear me okay? Everything's okay that way? Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're calling, coming from. Uh, good to have you with us. So hopefully I can uh, deal with what is a bit of a complex subject and, and, and get through it in a way that makes it somewhat understandable. Uh, and first, okay. So uh, a little about me, uh, as Caitlin said, I am the director of community development. I'm also one of the kill founders of LPI dating back to 1999. Uh, and so I'm somewhat familiar with the bylaws of LPI because I helped write them back in 99 and I also got involved with the recent rewrite. That's the reason why we're here now talking about membership and about voting for the board. Uh, I've also had experience um, writing bylaws for other nonprofit organizations and small businesses. So why are we here? Um, up until, uh, up until a couple of years ago, LPI's board of directors was all done by appointment. Uh, the existing board uh, added new members uh, by its own vote, and that's how it happened. This is common in foundations and other nonprofits that aren't into membership. But uh, in 2018, as we were coming to the 20th anniversary of LPI, uh, we decided that we wanted to do a change and so we did a massive change to the bylaws in 2018. And that for the first time brought in the concept of membership and the purpose of having membership amongst other benefits that go to our members is the ability to vote for the LPI board of directors. So for the very first time next year, we are going to be having an election and it's going to be the members who are going to do the voting. Now, if you would like to get involved with LPI, if you'd like to be a member of LPI, uh, I'm going to refer you to another webinar that uh, LPI Executive Director Matt Rice is going to be doing uh, December 9th. So uh, uh, Caitlin has put up a, a link to it. Uh, I invite you to go to that. It's an AMA where essentially anything to do with membership uh, you can ask. And, and get a better idea on how you can be a member, what benefits exist for that. But the one I'm gonna talk about today is the member benefit of actually being able to vote on the LPI board. And so why did we do it? A uh, couple of reasons. Uh, the biggest one was deciding that we needed to have more accountability to our community. And that means 
uh, when LPI was formed, obviously, we didn't have too many people that were certified professionals. We didn't even have too many people in 1999 that had a lot of jobs in open source. Obviously, that has changed. Uh, as Caitlin said, we've uh, certified hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, much more than that have uh, either registered or taken some exams. And so the community now has grown worldwide and in significant numbers that now there is a pool of people that uh, we believe are capable of helping guide the profession. And so in that way, LPI sees itself as a kind of professional organization. Um, and that when you're going to do that, uh, it's, the, it's the professionals themselves that ought to be guiding the direction of the body. And so that's the approach we took. And that's why, for instance, in order to be a member, you have to hold an LPI certification. So it's our certified professionals that in fact are our members and it's our members that are going to, uh, starting with the election next year, vote for the board and guide our direction. Uh, another important point of this is to give the individuals working in open source an individual voice. Uh, as we found over the last 20 years, the world of open source has become very, very corporate. Uh, you have some of the biggest names in IT now that are uh, considered to be leaders in open source. And this is great, and this has been fantastic for us. It's been fantastic for people getting jobs in open source. But what it also means is it's been crowding out the voice of the individual. If it wasn't for individuals, uh, you know, people like Linus Torvalds, Richard Stallman, and so on, if it wasn't for individuals, we wouldn't have had open source. And LPI believes that it's important, of, of critical importance, to maintain a voice for the individual in the direction of open source, in the way that things are going. And the way that we're doing this for ourselves is by giving our individual uh, open source practitioners, our open source professionals, an ability to have a voice in LPI. And what LPI is doing, not only as a certification body, but as a global organization that's committed to the growth of open source. And so we're here to support the profession of the people that are working with open source and we want to focus on the individual. Uh, there's other organizations that are doing a great job of supporting corporate interests that are working with open source. That's necessary, that's useful, but we have a role to play in continuing to give a voice to the individual. And the way that we're doing it, at least through here, is by giving you a say in how LPI is run. So the this is the LPI board. This is its functions. In some ways, it's not very different from any other nonprofit board. Uh, we are driven by a mission. We're not driven by profit. Uh, the mission of LPI is to promote open source and to promote the people that work with it. And so what the board does is driven by that mission. So starting next year, this board is going to be elected by members. It's going to oversee the high level direction of LPI. Um, you know, do we do more certifications? Do we do more advocacy? Uh, very high level decisions about the future of LPI and its direction. What are our priorities? And uh, like I say, taking care of the present with an eye on the future. We need to see where the world of online education and certification is going. We need to see how people are getting jobs, how people are training for those jobs, how people are getting certified for those jobs. Uh, the state of the profession. So on one hand, we need to do what we're doing now, which is helping to prepare people for high quality jobs. At the same time, we also need to keep track of what's happening in the world of technical education, in the world of uh, professional ethics and things like that. And so uh, we have been slowly moving away from just doing certification. We've been doing uh, a number of activities in advocacy. We've increased membership. Uh, we participated in a website called FOSS Life, which is a fantastic resource for open source materials. And so uh, we take our mission very seriously and it involves more than just doing tests. Um, you know, that's a great source of revenue for us, but it doesn't define what we are. Uh, the board is going to be elected for three year terms except for this very first election, which is because we're gonna be staggering things. Uh, we'll be electing some directors for a three-year term, some for a two-year term, and some for a one-year term, just this time only. After this year, 
after 2021, 20, uh, the elections will all be for three year terms. We're only doing it this time with staggered because we wanna have it so that in any given year, roughly one third of the board is going to be elected. So uh, the election process, uh, there's significant amounts of documentation about it. Uh, there'll be uh, web, web pages on the LPI site that you'll be able to go. So the very, very summary version of this is that uh, come the election time, every member of LPI is going to be presented with a ballot. That ballot is going to have two slates of candidates. One slate is going to be produced by a nomination committee. And uh, that nomination committee is going to receive applications, vet them, and present them to the membership. We also have a concept of member nominations. And so that is any member of, of LPI, uh, if they don't want to go through the vetting of the nomination committee, uh, if they get 20 endorsements, they're capable of putting themselves on the ballot. So every member is going to get a ballot that's going to have two slates of candidates. They're going to say, uh, vote for three from this list and vote for one from this list. And so there's a, every member is going to get those two lists. And the final tally, you will be able to vote on these up until the date of the annual general meeting, uh, which is going to be next spring, a date yet to be determined. So the first part of this is the nomination committee which is a group of people that are tasked with um, seeing what LPI needs in terms of um, diversity, in terms of skills that we need, in terms of just the general needs of a nonprofit and finding and, and actively going out and seeking people that might be good candidates. At the same time, we're gonna have an open facility on our website so that anybody that wants to run for the board and that includes members and non-members of LPI. Anyone who thinks that they are a good candidate to be on the board is welcome to uh, put in an application that will be reviewed by the nomination committee. So it has the two roles, to accept and review all the applications and to actively try and seek out people that meet, our, that meet the needs of the organization. So let's say in any given year, if we have a need for a treasurer then the nomination committee will be charged with trying to find people that have the skills of being a good treasurer to sit on our board. Uh, there are also other things. We uh, now have uh, a diversity mandate. So we wanna make sure just as LPI is global that our constitution of our board of directors is going to be as diverse as our candidates, as globally diverse as our candidates, as culturally diverse as our candidates. So this is all what the nominating with the nomination committee is asked to do. It's it's a big task, and uh, but it's a very very important task because the nomination committee will take all the candidates, the ones that have applied on our website and the ones that have gone out and been sought out, and essentially go through all of that and come out with a slate from which the members are going to vote. And um, so. Right now, we're seeking people to be on this nomination committee. We don't need many people, but it's a very important task. So how do you apply to be on the nomination committee? Anyone, you don't need to be a member of LPI. Anyone can apply to be on the nomination committee. Uh, we have a form on the website if you want to. Um, and so, um, we're going to be picking the nomination committee. That is the board of LPI will pick the nomination committee, but it will be independent of the board. Uh, board members that are planning to run for re-election cannot be on the nomination committee. So it's essentially people who are not board, not staff, uh, and only people, uh, maybe a board member that doesn't want to run again or other members of our community would be on the nomination committee they will be charged by the board and saying, please find people with this list of talents and their deliverable will be to produce a slate of people that they've gone through. And they say, we have three spots to fill. Here's a slate of you know, six, seven, eight people that could be in an election for these three spots. So, 
if you don't if if you don't want to be vetted so anyone that doesn't want to be vetted by that process we also have a secondary process and that is because we don't want the nomination committee to necessarily be a gateway to everybody so if somebody says i just i want to run i'm going to be i'm popular people like my views on the future of lpi um, but i don't want to go through the nomination committee if you're a member of lpi and you can get endorsements from 20 other members of LPI, you can put yourself on the member nomination ballot without any vetting by the nomination committee or anyone else. Essentially, as long as you're legally eligible to run, you go on the ballot if you go through this process, but it is limited to existing members of LPI, which also means if you want to go through this way and you have an LPI certification, encourage you to become a member of LPI because it entitles you to come through this process. And so the end result of this is the member nomination process. Again, everyone who comes in will be on the ballot without vetting. So if we get one person coming in and they're eligible or we have 10 or 20, they'll all be on the slate. And so, yeah, this could mean down the road is the member nomination committee could say, you know, vote one from this slate of 20. But that's that's our process. That's sort of that's that's this particular version of democracy to make sure that anybody that wants to be on the ballot who's a member and gets the 20 uh, endorsements, they can be on the ballot. We don't have any say on whether they can be there or not. So come election time, which is going to be the early spring. Uh, members are going to be notified who the candidates are, and there'll be a candidate. There'll be a web part of the website that will have the bio bios for all the candidates, and they'll be given an opportunity to talk about their positions, why you should vote for them. Uh, there'll be opportunity to do questions and answers both on the website, and we're hoping to schedule a couple of of uh, webinars and online meetings during the election campaign where. Uh, in real time, people will be able to uh, answer questions from members. Why should I vote for you? What is your take on this or that particular issue? Um, <coughs> uh, the voting will be done electronically using a trusted open source system where we can verify everything and yet the votes will still be very, uh, will be totally anonymous. And the results of this will be announced in real time at the annual general meeting. We will be able to take votes up until the date of the AGM. We'll be closing off the voting partway through the meeting. And because we're tallying everything electronically, uh, the, the person who's overseeing the elections will be able to announce the results towards the end of the AGM. Um, so that is my quick introduction to the election process. Uh, there's a lot more details to this. Um, as uh, Caitlin has posted, there is web there is web links from the LPI website where we go into a lot more detail about how these are done. Uh, I invite you, if you're interested, if you're a member, uh, please consider running. Uh, if you're not a member, please consider running through the nomination committee. And uh, in the meantime, in the very short term, we're actually looking for members for the nomination committee. So we're actually accepting applications for all of those uh, that will be available on the website shortly. Uh, the immediate thing is to fill the nomination committee. And then at that point, they will evaluate everyone that puts their name forward as an applicant to the nomination committee. Uh, in parallel with that, anybody who gets the 20 endorsements can put themselves forward as a member nominated uh, candidate to that slate. Okay, uh, so at that point, that is the that is the end of it, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. So right now, I see one question from uh, John uh, Mad Dog, and so the question is, what uh, when do the new board members take over? And what typically what happens in a nonprofit is that new board essentially takes over almost immediately after the AGM. Once the ballots are verified and endorsed by the membership, um, there is almost immediately afterwards 
a transitional meeting between the old board and the new board. And then the new board picks its own chair and then it picks its own meeting schedule and things like that. But that transition happens almost immediately after the AGM. Um, Thanks, Evan. That's yeah. a lot of information. So thank you very much. If anyone does have further questions, um, please feel free. Uh, now's the time to put them in the Q&A or the chat box as well. That is a lot of information that Evan went through. We will be sending out um, the appropriate links uh, to have you We'll give you the opportunity a bit more to review, um, but as well, we will be sending out the recording um, and any contact information. So if you do have further questions, feel free to uh, follow up with us at a later date as well. Oh. And so uh, that link at the bottom of the screen right there uh, will uh, take you to more information. Uh, and uh, as well as the links that the link that uh, Caitlin put up. Um, so this is going to be a, a long process. It's been a long time in the making. And uh, so uh, we encourage any questions, any comments. Uh, we really want to try and make this process as simple as possible while making it as democratic as possible. Uh, we have a real desire to turn the to turn the organization over to its membership, and make sure that the you know our, our certified professionals are the ones that are determining the the future of the profession. It's very important to us going forward, uh, and so you're all part of the process. We need you to help us make this work, and so um, thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. I encourage you to get involved through any of the ways we've been talking about. Uh, apply to the nomination committee. Consider being a board member of LPI. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Evan, for all the information today. Um, if there are no further questions, we will wrap it up. Again, um, I will be sending around the presentation slides, the recording, and all the contact information um, that you found in your chat. So thank you for participating and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.